Hi everyone, hope you're keeping well. Today's video is about um, boundary exercises or boundary games. The idea of these exercises are to teach your dog to stay within a defined location or boundary until they're released otherwise. Now this can have lots and lots of useful applications. For example, teaching your dog to stay in their bed when visitors arrive so you can get them into the house without that initial craziness, that excitement of rushing up to greet them before they've even stepped through the door. Teaching your dog to stay in their bed or in a specific place whilst you're eating so you don't get them hassling you at the table. Same thing when you're prepping food, teaching them to stay there whilst you're prepping, not up at the counters trying to steal things. Uh, teaching them to stay in the boot to the car when you open the door or even with your distance control teaching them to stay um, at a specific distance away from you where we lay our lead out teaching them to stay behind it so that becomes their boundary so basically it's any area that you can define as a boundary to them now um, the way dogs learn is they repeat behaviors that are beneficial to them so in terms of the boundary games, they are most likely to stay within the boundary if good things happen there. So what we want is all of the rewards to happen whilst they're within that area. And if they come out, they don't get anything. If they stay in, that's when they get the good stuff happening. So what you'll need is two different types of reward. You'll need a high value for when they are in the specific location and you'll need a low value for their release queue. So their release queue is what tells them they're allowed to exit the boundary. So we want them to know that they can come out when we tell them they can. So Luca's release queue is okay, but you can say anything you like. Okay, finished, end, break. It really doesn't matter, but you do need a release queue for this exercise. So they know when they are allowed to exit from that area. So the way we start this exercise is we make the boundary a really good place to be. So um, what you want to do is have a nice big handful of treats. And what you do is you, for example, if we're using the dog's bed, you feed the bed. So what you're going to do is throw a treat into the bed. The dog will go in to get it. Once they've got it, what you want to do is throw another one in before they have a chance to exit. And you repeat this, you're going to have quite a high rate of reward to start with to make them want to stay um, within the boundary. If they exit, you just toss it back into the bed. Always remember you're feeding the bed, not the dog in this instance. So you want the reward to land within the boundary. You have to have a pretty good aim. If you have a very, very good aim, then you'll find this quite difficult. Um, you don't give a command to start with. What we're doing first of all is just building up the association that being in the bed is where they want to be because that's where the good stuff happens. Um, if you find they're having time to exit and get back to you, then your rate of reward isn't fast enough. You need to up the ante. So maybe do this with their food um, if you're worried about giving them too many treats. Um, but what we want to do is them to be staying in the bed because they're anticipating that the next reward is coming. Um, then what we're going to do is release them, so we're going to tell them okay and toss a reward out of the bed so that they exit on command and go and get that release reward. And then we do it again and again and again and again, and repetition is our friend. Um, and what we start to do is then add the cue, in, the command word in for when they go into the bed. So Luca's word is mat, even though it's a bed, we call it the mat. So I start off with tossing a treat with the word mat, he goes in and gets it. Um, and then we reward him in place. And then as you practice, eventually what starts to happen is you can slow your rate of reward, but they will still stay there because they're anticipating the next one will come until eventually you don't need to be rewarding um, as regularly. Um, and then eventually the point where you tell them mat or bed, they just go there and they wait until they're released. Once they understand the concept, um, you can then train it with distractions. So that's where you do the training initially with it's just you there and then you would add in perhaps the visitor distraction you would train it whilst you've got a willing guinea pig coming to be your visitor um, always making the bed the more attractive place to be um, in the series of videos you'll see that i've um, done this exercise with luca with his bed um, with some cones and also with the lead laid out like we do the distance control so in terms of using it for the distance control, at the moment, what I'm doing is teaching him that staying away from me is a good place to be. He doesn't need to come to me to get rewards. If he stays away behind that lead line, he 
he gets rewarded. So it teaches him that he doesn't cross that line without the added complication of asking him to do anything yet. So what we're asking him to do is to stay away from me behind that line. So he's getting rewards for staying away from me. Then the next step would be to add in some um, sits down stands, for example. But to start with, I'm just creating that um, link with him that staying away from me is a good place to be. Um, have a little look at the videos um, and have a little go. And any questions, um, give me a shout. Okay, thanks. Bye. Good boy. Good lads. Good lads. Okay. Okay, so another um, application of the boundary games is when you are in the kitchen and you are food prepping. It's lunchtime for my children. Um, and what we want when we're food prepping is we don't want these guys involved. Um, we don't want begging and we don't want scrounging from surfaces. We want to be able to prep our food without being hassled, without dogs jumping up at the counter, for example. So one way of doing this is using our boundary, our bed, and that's where we want them to stay while we're food prepping. So what I suggest you do is you do this exercise at a time we're not actually cooking. What you want is for your focus to be on um, the training, not that you're going to chop your fingers off with a sharp knife when you're prepping your carrots. So what we want to do is using your food reward, uh, if you still need to toss one into the bed, you're going to tell them, Matt, pop them into the boundary, um, and then we would reward them for being in there. Good job, good Matt. And then we're going to turn around and we're going to pretend to prep our lunch, touching everything. Da, 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 da. Are they still there? They are. Reward them in place. Back to what we're doing. Doing our food prep. Are they still there? Yes. Reward them in place. Back to our food prep. So you can see the process. We're pretending to be touching all this really nice human food, but actually if you stay over there where you're supposed to be, you get these rewards. Um, and eventually you won't need to reward as quickly as that. You'll be able to um, reduce your rate of reward down to be perhaps only rewarding once during that process. Um, and then eventually what you'll find is when you start food prepping, they're gonna sit in their beds um, automatically because they think that they might get something. So 
It's teaching them that they can be away from you and good things happen in that space. Okay, so another uh, way this technique can be helpful is with our distance control. So those working on silver two or above, um, distance control is where we want our dogs to perform a series of movements, sit, stands and down at a distance of five metres away from us for our silver two. Um, one problem that people often have is that the dog comes to them for rewards, so therefore they lose their distance. So what I want to do is teach the dog that it is beneficial to stay away from us. So what I want is Luca to be behind the lead. So I want him to realise that being over there behind the lead is beneficial. So, tossing him a treat away, behind the lead. He's over, still there. I'm going to reward him again. And again. Okay. And release. Back behind the lead. He steps over, oh, back behind the lead, behind again, behind again. So he's learning that it's more beneficial to stay away over there behind the lead than it is to come towards me. I think they bounce.